These are the parts to build the best gaming PC money can buy. But there's one issue. I've never built a PC. I bought my first one off a of Facebook Marketplace. I had a company build my next one. But for this build, I'm doing it. <laughs> I really hope I don't mess up because this costs a lot of money. Let's run through the specs and see what exactly I could ruin in this video. This is the height Y40 case, which looks so sick to me. The glass corner just looks so nice. Then I got an MSI RTX 4090, just like <clears throat> $1,650. The CPU is the Intel i9 13900K, and I'll hopefully cool that with the Master Liquid Illusion and a few Halo Master fans. The RAM is 64 gigabytes of DDR5 at 6400 megahertz. That'll be slotted into my Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Elite motherboard. Then for storage, I got two Gen 4 M.2 SSDs for a total of four terabytes and a hard drive with eight terabytes of storage. To power it all, I got a 1200 watt power supply from NZXT. This build cost me a total of $4,038.50. So let's see if I can manage to mess it up. To assist me along the way, I used these two tutorials. Step one was to take out the motherboard so we could begin assembly, but step two came at me really fast. We are not ready to install the CPU. Uh, yo, I don't know who's we, I'm not ready. Installing the CPU is one of the scariest parts about building a PC, and it was just the second step. I say it's scary because CPUs are this tiny chip with pins on the back that can bend and break, but it's an expensive part. Like mine was around $600, so you really don't want to break that. The CPU is basically the brains of the PC, and I wanted a great one to help my PC perform well while I edit videos, game, and record. In the end, the install actually wasn't that difficult. Oh my god, it did it. I will admit though, I got confused on how to take the removable plate off, so thank god for manuals. After 40 minutes, I finally move on. Ooh, next on the list is the RAM. This one I've actually done before because I had to reseat my RAM in my current PC. I should probably mention that this is the first PC that I'm building, not the first PC that I've had. My first PC I bought pre-owned off of Facebook Marketplace for $450, which had a GTX 1060, a Ryzen 5 2600, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. My second gaming PC I built by Power GPU about two and a half years ago for around $2,000, which has an RTX 3070 Ultra, an i7-10700, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. And now my third PC, I'm personally building it with, well, I already told you the specs. Okay, we got RAM. The RAM is basically used for doing lots of PC activities at the same time. With this much of it, I can be editing while searching the web while watching a stream and nothing will lag. But even with my experience of reseating RAM, which is basically just taking it out and putting it back in, I was still a little nervous. I'm like, what if I break it? But I followed the steps by pushing back the tabs, making sure I had the sticks in the correct slots in the correct position, and applied some firm pressure until I heard that magical... With that done, I move on to my SSDs, which both need to be installed. This motherboard has tons of slots for these, but the fastest one goes under this piece called the heatsink. Mine are both the same speed, so it doesn't matter which one I put in there, but the other one goes in one of these bays that eventually has a thermal guard placed on top to keep it cool. The SSDs are gonna store all my apps and games to let me open them and load them super fast. These are probably the easiest PC part to install because you literally just line it up and push it down. Hey, I did it. The next step is to install the AIO, a critical critical piece for keeping the PC cool, especially the CPU. I'm not gonna lie, this part looks kind of intimidating. I was right to say that, because this is where the difficulty was raised. My AIO did not look like the one in the tutorial I was following, so I had to take out the manual and follow that instead. My AIO is going on the ceiling of my PC, so I had to make sure the fans look like this and then set it off to the side. There's actually a lot of that with building a PC. You do something, then set it off to the side for a while to do something else. In this instance, that something else was I had to unbox my case. The case is pretty self-explanatory. It just houses all your parts, but it's good to pick a case that looks good, has good airflow, and has good cable management tools. You'd think this would be the easy part, but with this case having a glass corner, they got pretty creative with where they put the screws, and it took me almost 30 minutes to find and unscrew all of them. Three hours in, I had the glass and all the panels off, and it was time to actually put something in the case, the motherboard. Surprisingly, this part was as easy as lining up the holes and then just screwing all of them in. Now it's step seven, and it's time to set up the airflow. Air Airflow is critical in a PC because if parts get too hot, the PC crashes and can even break or melt certain parts. The first airflow part is the AIO, which is mounted here at the top of the case. This cools the CPU by having liquid inside these tubes that gets cooled and pumped through. You just have to put some thermal paste and mount this fat thing right over the top of the CPU. Now, to keep the rest of the PC cool with fans, you have to make sure that the front and bottom fans pull the cool air in and the back and top fans push the hot air out. The fans in the AIO are installed in the case 
which means I have to start plugging in cables. And this is where it all went downhill. It took about an hour to figure out where all the fans and AIO plug in. Then I moved on to installing the power supply. So I needed all of my important cables plugged into the motherboard, which includes so many cables. The 24 pin cable, the HD audio, the USB, the USB-C, the front panel, the USB 3.0. I could not figure out where any of these cables went. And after over an hour, I decided to find a Discord server to help me. This is a realistic first PC build. So I won't lie, I made some pretty dumb mistakes like plugging in my CPU power cables into my 24 pin connector. And there were a couple people that laughed at me for it. These mistakes happened partly because the tech source tutorial I was following was not good for me. He said to use certain cables that I wasn't supposed to use. It was all so confusing that I had to take a break. And here's where we're at. Thankfully, the next day, one of the Discord users sent me this graphic, which saved my build. Using this, I learned that my CPU power slots were hidden by my top left AIO fan. So I had to take that off and then plug those in. Then I just followed the guide for the rest of them. I found a tutorial on how to install my eight terabyte hard drive, which was pretty easy. And then I got to plug everything into my power supply. My case has this extender piece so I can vertically mount my graphics card. So I plug that in next and it's time for the final PC component to go inside my 4090. The graphics card dictates how good your gaming graphics are. And it can also increase performance in some other apps as well. Even though it's the most expensive and maybe most important part of a gaming PC, it's actually so easy to install. Just line it up, push it down, screw in the back plates, and it's done. It's taken me 10 hours of building to get to this point, but finally all my parts are on, the cables are plugged in, it looks great except for the back where all the cables are. But I still haven't tested to see if it even turns on. Let's flip on the power switch, and the moment it's true. Three, two, one. Oh, look at that. The front two fans were running, but the RGB wasn't working. I made a quick fix and reconnected the RGB cables and it worked. I installed Windows on a flash drive for my other PC, then it booted up and we have a functioning PC. We got a home screen. <laughs> No, I make Fortnite videos, so let's launch Fortnite for the first time ever and get some benchmarks. Alright, I'm officially in Fortnite. I'm on performance mode just because that's what I usually use. FPS is set to unlimited, and I'm gonna turn on show FPS. Bro, over a thousand FPS? Is that real? That's actually insane. Now I'm gonna take this and put it on literally the highest it can go. Oh, wait. That's crazy. It still feels so good. And I'm still getting like, what is that? 300 FPS? Well, I don't really play any other games besides Fortnite, but this PC is crazy. I'm so surprised it turned out as well as it did. I was so sure I was gonna mess something up. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video and thanks so much for watching.